Hi guys, my name's Sam and welcome back to the channel. Uh, if you've been following this mini-series and you'll know that I've previously done a video on how to download the full version of SketchUp for free, I'll put a link up here if you missed that. Um, I've also done the first video in this mini-series um, on how to create basic shapes and extrusions. This is video number two um, on how to create and edit components and why that's super important when you're modeling in SketchUp. Let's get into it. Okay, so in the last video in this little mini series on how to use SketchUp, we just ran through the real basics of how to create shapes, how to extrude them into 3D, assign different materials to those shapes, um, and that, that was it really, really just how to navigate through the basics of the software. So in this video, we're really going to take things to the next level and I'm going to show you how to create and edit, create and edit components within SketchUp. Um, and this is really important and it's going to make a massive difference to your modeling and the editability and flexibility of the models that you're creating. So picking up where we left off last time, we discovered that when you add new shapes or geometries onto an existing surface, SketchUp merges them together. So that if you want to move or, or change anything, you can't really do that because um, it just stretches um, things and everything just kind of goes out of kilter. So the, the way to do this properly is to create components. So I'll quickly just delete all those shapes that we created last time until we're back to just that ply flooring. Um, okay, so I've got back to the point of just having the ply flooring. And whereas before we just ploughed in, starting to model all these beams for the bench seat, there's a, another step that we need to do first to make this model a lot more flexible. And that is to make this ply floor into a component and the way that we do that is by right clicking on the um, geometry that we've created and you can hover over select click select all connected because at the moment we've just selected that top face of that ply floor we haven't selected the, the side profiles or the bottom face so that's why we need to go right click select all connected and then as you can see it has selected all six of those faces and then we can either go um, edit make component or you'll notice here that it's got a g uh, next to that make component so once you've selected everything let's just do that again right click select all connected and hit g on your keyboard it then brings up this create component window. Um, so you, it's by default just gone to component number eight. Um, we're going to call that ply floor. You could add a description in there if you wanted to, but we're not going to bother with that. Let's just call it ply floor, click create. And then you will notice that you can move it, rotate it, you can move it around um, and do whatever you want with it without that component or geometry changing or deforming. So let's just assign a material to that. And the nice thing about that is that it applies it to the whole component rather than just one face of the geometry. And what we'll do is we will start sketching that beam like we did last time. So we're going to start it in that corner, 
again going to do 44,44. We're going to go push pull. We're going to make it half a metre like we did last time. And then, rather than just ploughing on, we will again go right click, select all connected, hit G. We're going to go bench upright. Press enter to create. We've now got two separate components. And if we go into our tray on the right hand side, um, if you can't see this, you need to go window, manage trays, click on your default tray and turn on, make sure components is turned on. I'm actually going to turn off styles, layers, scenes, instructor, all of that, just to tidy things up a bit. Um, and yeah, within those trays, you've got this component tray and it will contain a list of all of the components in your sketch. So you can see I've got a number of ones in there that I've already created within that sketch. So let's find, um, let's find the one that we just created. I think they're in alphabetical order. So we'll have fly floor. And there should be a bench upright, we called it, didn't we? Now the nice thing about components is that you don't have to remodel things if you've got repetitive parts. So say we need, I don't know, five more of these uprights, you can simply drag them in and position them wherever we want. So let's say, for example, we want to position that, that corner half a metre away from there. We could click on Tape Measure Tool, click on that corner, snaps to that edge, type in 500. You'll then get a point, like a construction point, 500 mil away from that corner. And go on the select tool, so make sure the component's selected, and then move that upright to that point that we've created. We could then repeat that process again and drag in some more of those. Again, we go 500 mil on the other axis. We've got that construction point there. We'll drag another component in from that components tray so we're not having to, you know, repeatedly create the same items. Another way of doing that would just be to select the component, control C, control V, and then you've got another identical part. Um, so yeah, like many CAD softwares, there's multiple ways of doing the same thing. So um, just to confirm that copy and paste, click. We'll do another um, bit of construction geometry. So say 500 mil, set again, and then we will use this, using this move tool, the four arrows, move that onto the point that we've created. And you can see that we're really starting to create something meaningful. It's really easy to edit, move things around. You know, if you decide, okay, I don't actually want that upright there. I want to move that 200 mil that way. You can then select the point that you want to move from, type in 200 mil, and it will do just that. So let's say we want to do some cross supports across there. We'll create a new component. So we've clicked the shapes tool. It's defaulting to rectangle. Click the corner where we want to start on. Because it's snapping to that edge, 
this dimension here will automatically be 44. Um, so then we can just type in 44, 44. It will give us the size that we want. That we can then extrude that across to meet there. We actually need to type in a dimension. That little box there, it says on edge in component, means that it is just going from that face to that face. And we don't need to type in a length. Um, now what we need to do is convert that to a component because as you can see at the moment, that is just a series of faces. And if we want it to try and edit that, it goes all to pot again um, and just deforms that that shape that we created. So to control Z to undo that, again, we will right select it, select one of the faces, right click, select, all connected, hit the G to create a component. And I'll just call this uh, side support. Hit enter. And we've created another component. We can either find that in our um, in our components tray and drag it in, or we can just go select the component, Control C, Control V, drop that in. That's in the wrong orientation, so we're going to use the rotate tool. I'm going to sit that on that top face, drag out with the mouse, click, and then it will snap to 90 degrees, which is where we want to rotate it. The angle is also down here, so if you wanted to do it off on a funny angle, you could just type in the angle that you want, but we'll let it snap to 90 degrees. We'll then move that, clicking on that corner point there to where we want it to be. Now, one of the really good things about components, especially where you've got repeated parts, is that if we edit one of them, all of the parts that are that same component will automatically update. So say that, okay, we've made these uprights half a meter tall, decide that's a little bit big and we want to reduce the height of the bench, by 50 mil, we right click, edit component, and then we can use the push pull tool, click on the face that we wanna change, and then you can see down here the amount that we're changing by, so we just type in minus 50, well, it's actually gone the wrong way, um, so if I, start moving it in one direction and then you just type in the amount you need. That will then reduce all of those uprights by the amount that you put in. Now I don't know why that one hasn't done it. A bit weird. Um, not sure about that. So let's get rid of that one and just bring in another one. Move it in, align it to that corner. <laughs> and they're all the same. What you can do is if you've created those four uprights and you, for whatever reason, have decided you want those three the same, but this one here, you want to make that one unique, you can do that. So it breaks the link of that component, so you've already got it selected. You right click, make unique, and then you can edit that component without the other ones changing. So you can see that I've increased the height of that without um, the other three changing. And then 
it's worth saying to exit that edit component space you can see how that the ply four and the other beams that we've created a grayed out so you just need to click in the background um, and that will exit the edit component space um, another really useful tool um, is the group tool so if we decide that we want our bench seat i don't know shifted that way rather than moving each component one by one you know moving that then selecting that moving this one another way of doing it is to make a group so if you use control and select well you could move it just like that with them all selected that's one way to do it but it can also be useful to make groups so um, similar similar way as making components you've selected everything that you want in the group and right click make group and then you can see it's kind of put a box around everything within that group and it won't actually let you edit of though edit any of those components until you've edited the group so you need to go edit group and then we can edit components within that group so i don't think i'm going to do cover too much more in this video because we're already approaching 20 minutes but um you can see how once you've created a few components you can quite quickly and easily build up uh, some really nice geometries and layouts so you can see how i've sort of done that here so if we just hide some of these components and you can see actually on this pull out bed i've grouped that ply sheet all these slats that go across and then this beam that's all in a group there so i can hide that all in one go that might be another good thing to talk about actually the heart the show and hide tool so um, if there's things that you want to temporarily um, hide right click hide and then if you go on view sorry if you go on edit you can go unhide and you can either go unhide last or edit unhide all so you can see i've got some construction lines that were hidden um which have now now showing now that I'd clicked unhide all. So I'll just rehide those to clear things up a bit. But yeah, you can see how I've just used repeated shapes to create this bench sheet. So I've created one slat there and then just copied it up. Um, same for those there. All of these interlocking slats for the pullout will be the same. I've just used that um, tape measure tool to create some reference geometry to um, equally space those apart so it's probably worth emphasizing that not only can that tape measure tool be used to measure existing components but it can also be used to create reference geometry just like that dot there it's a reference geometry that we could then use to position other components Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell if you haven't done so already. The next video in this little mini series, we're gonna be looking at layers um, and how they're really useful to show and hide certain elements of your model and turn things off and on. How that gives you a lot more control about what you're seeing and not seeing in the model. So stay tuned and yeah, thanks again for watching. Cheers.